Well, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, two distinguished discussants. The first one is uh, Dr. Wu Zhong Su. He uh, holds PhD in economics from Northwestern University, 1984. Dr. Wu is concurrently serving as president of Zhonghua Institution for Economic Research. He is uh, also uh, concurrently a research fellow in the Institute of Economics, Academia Sinica, a member of the Central Bank's uh, Financial Stability Committee, and uh, a professor in the Department of Economics at the National Taiwan University. The second discussant is uh, Dr. Chen Minla. He holds a PhD in economics from University of California at the Los Angeles in 1991. Dr. Chen is a research uh, is present uh, is at present a research fellow of the Institute of uh, Economics and Academia Sinica. He is also concurrently a professor of the Department of Economics at the National Taiwan University and uh, is a research fellow in the Graduate School of Economics and the Operation Research at the Kobe University, Japan. He was previously the Deputy Director of the Institute of Economics at Academia Seneca. Well, now, uh, please, Dr. Wu. Professor Buller and uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Director Jian and Professor Chen, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, it's my great pleasure to back the Institute of Economics, especially have this chance to listen to the ex excellent presentation by Professor Buller. And uh, a few days ago, the Director Jian in Trump he said, you have to talk more recent issues. Okay, so my job today just to talk about the uh, uh, recent development of uh, monetary policy. I won't address too much the detailed technical part. Such an excellent paper, it's hard to discuss, you know. <laughs> so uh, let me review the monetary policy of the United States in recent years and try to find out uh, maybe we can get some clues to say, set uh, an optimal monetary policy. Uh, from figure one, uh, according to the National Bureau of Economic Research, there are two recession periods uh, in the United States after the year 2000. One is from the March 2001 to uh, November 2001. The other one is from the December 2007 to June 2009. And the first one we may call it the dot-com crisis, and the second one we call it the financial turmoil. To react these two recession, actually, Fed uh, just re react quite promptly, and we can see from the figure two. Uh, before the peak of 201, the Fed uh, just downward just the federal fund rate from 6.5% to 6.0% on January 3rd, 2001, two months before the peak. And uh, after that, steadily uh, decreased the federal fund rate. And on June 25th, 2003, the federal fund rate was only 1.0% and maintained that level about one year. And after that, steadily increasing. And this, in the financial turmoil period, a very similar situation happened. Before the peak of 2007, the Fed lowered the interest rate from 5.25% to 4.75%. 4 uh, also, two or three months before the peak. And after that, 
drastically uh, reduced the federal fund rate. And on December 16, 2008, the federal fund rate was as low as 0% to 0.25%, and maintained at that low level about seven years. And uh, last year, at, on December 16, 2015, the Fed start uh, increased the interest rate. And during the seven years low interest rate, of course, there, there, there were serious uh, commodity, uh, the losing monetary policy, QE1, QE2, uh, the operation twist, QE3, QE3 extension. So if we look at the data of industrial production index, after adopting the, say, the quite strong monetary policy, the economy actually re recovered uh, uh, moderately and uh, in these two periods. So from these two figures, we may say that the timing of the Fed monetary policy actually quite accurate. And the procedure of the monetary policy seem to be consistent. And the short run stimulative effects of losing monetary policy on the economy appear significant. However, we had questions. Why the interest rate reached so low during the period 2003 to 2004, especially when the economy showed a significant rebound of the second quarter of 2003? Second, why the sewing up real estate market? If you look at the uh, real estate market index of the United States, is is where you know you can just look at just steadily increase and reach the highest level uh, in June 2007. And during this period, if you compare the federal fund rate, actually, for some periods, the interest rate is quite low. So uh, why the sewing up the real, real estate market combined with low interest rate did not cause any uh, concern by many brilliant minds? I, I think that they, they would have some Economists have different argument. However, how people can let this kind of situation happen? Is there time inconsistent problem? Also, from current period, the low interest rate has been maintained for about seven years. It's quite a long period. I mean, maybe in the United States uh, history, there's the longest low interest rate. And uh, we are curious about, say, maintain such a long period of low interest rate environment, and the lengthening financial leverage will not cause any trouble in the future. Also, di diverging movements between the real and financial sectors can last how long, which one will adjust. I think that the Fed, create, uh, they understand this kind of situation. And now they are worrying about is that if we look at the uh, industrial production index, yes, after 2010, the economic mo momentum has been kept relatively stable. However, for recent months, the industrial production index actually have uh, the negative growth rate for several months. And this implies that uh, maybe the economy is weakening. As mentioned by the Professor Buller, the employment rate is quite low. Okay, now it's only 5%. However, the labor participation rate is declining. And though the uh, Professor Buller said the monetary policy may can independently operate without taking <laughs> into account the uh, labor participation rate, and some economists may think that there is they some cyclical uh, factor uh, showing the labor participation rate. But I won't get into the debate, but the, this maybe uh, have some uh, uncertainty about uh, say, the strength of the economy. The number three is that if you look at the private investment, also show us maybe the decline trend for the private investment and uh, also for the, the uh, business profit rate. Uh, 
uh, for recent months, there is a sign showing that the profit rate has been declining. So the private investment momentum may not be so strong as the, say, the unemployment rate showed. And the fourth one is that if you look at the real estate market, as I mentioned that, after the crisis, the real estate market has steadily increased. And now the level is even higher than the peak level of 207. I don't know the economy is so good, but uh, people are worried about that. Because once your leverage is too high, the, once the real estate market you adjust, maybe we'll have some uh, serious problem in the future. Also for the stock market, if you look at the stock market, you also have a similar situation. For the United States, before the crisis, the peak level was around 13,000 points. I mean, around that level. But now it's more than 70,000 points. So uh, maybe uh, market fundamental cannot explain uh, the so strong uh, stock market. How about the inflation pressure? If we look at the inflation rate, Yes, for the CPI, actually it's not uh, strong, only 1.1%. However, for the core inflation, it has been showing more than 2% for seven months. It is implied that there will be a, a inflation pressure in the future. Uh, we don't know. Uh, so according to the above discussion, uh, it's unclear that the U.S. economy is on the way to recover or is in the mid of recession. I think that the Fed is trying to maintain the momentum of the U.S. economy and reduce the future adjustment costs and risk under a highly uncertain economic environment. And today, the main topic is for the uh, monetary policy, especially for the intermediate uh, monetary policy target. If you look at the historical performance, we'll we are curious about, say, were the 1997 to 2000 dot-com bubble and the 2008 to 2009 financial turmoil caused by an appropriate intermediate target rule? If we look at the uh, reaction of it, you can easily know that actually they are, the timing is quite good. I mean, they can uh, reduce the interest rate before the peak uh, uh, two or three months before. So in this aspect, the Fed had, had done a good job. However, if you look at the, the low, long period low interest rate, uh, I don't know which theory to support the, such a long and such low interest rate. And uh, I think the Fed uh, maybe uh, should take some responsibility for the, uh, the crisis for Dotcom or all the a financial turmoil, okay? And is there an optimal intermediate target to fulfill the task? Okay, in the literature, you have a, or a few the, uh, intermediate targeting rules, such as exchange rate targeting, monetary aggregate, rate, monetary conditions, and so on. And each one have its own supporters. However, economists have different points of view, say which one is better. I, I, I think that we leave the a uh, question to res future research to find out which one is better. However, as I mentioned, the urgent issue for the uh, Fed maybe is how to balance the uh, short-term economic momentum and the long run economic adjustment and risk. How to say that? On the one hand, if you keep the interest rate low, it will preserve the economic strength. However, the you know, housing prices may keep showing up and uh, they may adjust in the future. Okay, second, the inflation pressure may be continue to deteriorate and uh, this will cause uh, unwelcome or say uh, troublesome uh, income or wealth distribution problem. Uh, especially maybe they will also will have some uh, capital market rewind. Uh, this kind of risk maybe will cause a, a, a serious problem in the future. However, on the other hand, if uh, you raise the interest rate steadily and uh, 
the U U.S. economy might have chance to move into an unknown recession. Okay. So to conclude my re remarks, is that the U.S. current interest rates at a very low level compared to the historical data. Why the interest rate is maintained at such a low level has unpleasant reasons. It may not be easy to figure out which monetary policy is more appropriate under a long period of low interest rate and highly uncertain and complicated economic environment. However, to broaden the information set of the Fed to pay more attention to asset prices and uh, as mentioned by uh, Professor Buller, the credit con distribution condition of consumers, but also, also should include the firms, especially for some country, small BDF firms play a significant role in the economy. And this may have a higher chance to reach a more proper monetary policy. This is about my uh, discussion. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Wu. And then now uh, may I invite uh, uh, Dr. Chen? Okay. Ooh. Yes. And then uh, after that, uh, I will invite uh, Dr. Uh, Mura to respond. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, my discussion will be from a different aspect uh, from Zhong Su. Uh, try to be more academic because, uh, because uh, Jim is an academic guy, so I... I, I okay, um, my preparation is, is on this paper, this piece uh, uh, earlier, uh, worked by uh, four other people, called us my co-author, uh, and then, but then when the Brewer talked today, he talked about a paper, another paper with uh, a, a labor choice, so it's the, but the basic from book is about the same. So I will stick on the, my proposition earlier. This is this paper. So the, this is about paper you you have in hand, okay? And but before that, the, the, let me uh, show you some chart, okay? Lots uh, and your money grows straight before or uh, after 2008 for the three major country plus <coughs> Taiwan, okay? U.S., Europe, and, and Japan. Before 2008, money supply is. Usually uh, below 20 percent, uh, except uh, in uh, in 2002. But after 2008, a lot of country have have money growth rate, especially US, more than 100 percent. So, so big increase in growth rate in growth of money after 2008. That's a, a status fact. Okay, and because of that, do we see a, a large movement in price? No, actually not. It's about the same before, after 2008. So money does not affect price too much, okay? So that's uh, the second thing we, we noticed uh, be before, after 2008. How about interest rate, okay? Interest rate did drop after 2008. Before 2008, it was very normal for all countries uh, here, I also include UK. This price, their interest rate always the same, always higher before 2008, but after 2008, all countries have very low, almost zero uh, interest rate, okay? And this is the, so let me explain the, the figure after 2008. So the highest is, is euro, but dropped to almost zero, and, and now even going to negative, and Japan going to negative, and Jap US state, uh, uh, this uh, zero bank in Taiwan is higher. So this is about the fact of, of, of monetary uh, effect of monetary policy on price and interest rate. Okay, so then going, coming back to the paper, okay, the Fed uh, after 2008 basically hold two policies. Two pa One is for guidance. What is that? The last guidance is a promise about future monetary policy. Uh, the policy is try to hold interest rate at, at least zero not elective, okay? So that's the first policy, and whether this policy effect or not, there are debates, okay? If you look at the legal papers, think it's, it's, 
it's effective, but uh, data tell otherwise. Um, could be effective, could not be effective, okay? Second is quantitative easing, okay? That's the purchase of both privately issue and publicly issue date, okay? The policy you, you, you heard of since the 2008. And about the effectiveness of this policy, medical analysts suggest, suggest zero, no effect. But data tears or otherwise, tears mixed could be effective or could not be effective. So, so there are two kinds of uh, story uh, among theory and, and, and data, okay? And the paper, up to this paper, but the previous uh, version, okay? This paper, paper is trying to study optimal money the policy at zero low bound in order to understand whether this uh, four guidance quantity easing of our money the policy provide, provide an appropriate response. Uh, okay, the paper uh, specifically built a love cycle model of, of T period model, 60 years model, uh, with moment in private day level, interest rate, and inflation. So, private day and currency are the only two aces in the model. There are two groups of population. Majority is credit users, a minority is cash users, and these cash users use cash so price is determined by this group. And a, a feature is that there is an aggregate labor uh, productivity shock, okay? So productivity is a uh, weight average of, of uh, industrial term and industrial term plus shock, okay? That's, that's, that's the productivity shock, okay? And last shock, okay? Shock is small, small negative, that's fine. Productivity is still high, so interest would be still high. So, so if the shock is small, it's small, and given that contract is determined in nominal term, and at least one period ahead, okay? So that give a, a, a credit market friction. But in, in, in this kind of shock, uh, monetary parties can mitigate this credit market frictions. Uh, by providing otherwise mission state conditions uh, through a counter secret price <coughs> level policy with inflation target of this. this. This target, because this shock is small, it's, it's negative, small, negative, but not, not but small, price will be still positive, we increase, and then with this policy, this nominal policy or nominal GDP uh, targeting, and all cohort credit users and cash users, we are have an equal consumption amount. So, so perfect consumption solution. Okay, so, so then replicate this complete credit market allocation from ratio sharing perspective. Okay, so, so that's nice. But in the case, sigma is negative and big. What would that, what would the result be? Okay, here they propose another policy, but six year, this nominal GDP targeting policy, if if this is uh, positive, that's fine. But if this is uh, it's more than one, that's fine. But if it's more than one, they will stimulate the price in a way such that the price would be increased. And this price, uh, this promise would be sufficient to ensure that the net nominal interest rate remain positive. And then this complete free market policy remains intact. Okay, but but uh, drawback is that this cash user uh, maybe harm or you harm. So that's a, a, a side effect. Uh, okay, so that's the sketch of, of the paper. Okay, the paper okay has uh, several good features, including private debt and circulation, life cycle, and and particular heterogeneous agents. So you could study. Uh, uh, distribution problem and and it, particular the paper has an legal result, okay. So that's good, and and the paper could shed light on how a monetary policy could duplicate a location near complete credit market location, okay. Uh, in the case when interest is, is low, so the in the case is is the time is is uh in the period after two thousand and eight. So that's that's those are nice feature of the paper, okay. So I I will provide some thoughts. Uh, that could uh, give some uh, extension of the paper. Uh, OK, 
okay? First is that when the institution is near the zero row bound, okay? And so when expected aggregate level productivity is decreasing, the proposed policy is to increase inflation. But problem is, is it easy or not, okay? This is a chart I showed you earlier, but let me show you again. These are the price that is decreasing, not increasing. In US, maybe it's fine, but does the model applicable uh, can, can the model apply to other countries in the world? Because economy like to a more general model that is not only applied to the US, that could be also applied to other countries in the world. But it seems that it's not easy. In the case of Japan, Europe, would the policy be appropriate or not? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe, they, but, but uh, from their experience, it seems it's not easy to uh, raise the price, okay? So that's my, my first comment. So probably, uh, probably uh, if, they, you, if you incorporate this uh, environment from Japan or, or European, and you could check whether La Pali still work or not. Uh, probably, probably it works, but I'm not sure at this moment, okay? So that's my first. Second comment, okay? Uh, okay? If, so, so this is only private date, okay? But actually, you can issue public date. That's the, that's the policy a lot of countries in the world doing, okay? Taiwan, um, we, have, we, still, we, we, we face this limit. And other countries increase this, this state limit, okay? We know that the, this, this state issue is borrowing against the future, okay? So if this government date and, and central bank can buy government date, and then give it to the people, kind of transfer to all people, for example, in the aging society. Okay, I'm sure price will be easy to go up because people spend. At least some cash users will get money. Okay, so price go up. Question is, would this target still work or not? Okay, that, that's uh, an aspect that I would like to, to see. I, I'm not sure at this moment I cannot make a guess. So, so, Okay, so that's the, my second comment. Okay, the third story is other than date, a lot of people hold ASA in other, other type. One is stock share, one is housing. These are people usually, the kind of ASA people usually hold. Okay, so my question is if you consider one of these two features, to what extent this nominal GDP targeting policy uh, is applicable to this environment? Uh, this is uh, not easy, not easy, okay, of course, yeah. But uh, just uh, to give you a thought, but you, maybe you, you four guys could uh, extend a paper to that direction, okay? Finally, leisure. Okay, the paper you, pr you, you present in already in leisure, so it works, it works. But still, you rely on this uh, exhaustion, labor productivity shock, but sometimes, actually, in most cases, uh, productivity also has an indulgent flavor. By training, by other kinds of uh, activity, it could enhance labor productivity. So, if if, if labor productivity is indulgent, I I'm not sure whether this probably still work because then 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 uh, there's would not be a big negative shock. So, so you actually you don't need to rely on this nominal GDP targeting policy, but, but probably some words should be talked uh, for this aspect, okay? So to wrap up, this is a nice piece of paper with very good future uh, in the economy in the era of zero low bank uh, with uh, this long state contingent, the nominal country. And the paper uh, help us understand a lot of uh, issue, uh, especially the policy could duplicate a uh, complete credit market allocation from risk sharing perspective. Okay, I'll stop here.